scaling versus growing your business. Yes, guys, there is a difference. Today's guest has started and managed multiple comp companies over the course of 25 years and has success successfully, I'm tongue tied today, guys. What do you want from me? It's raining out, it's Monday. Um, and he successfully sold two businesses. So he's got some experience in the exit strategy department. So during this time, he's coached and consulted with hundreds, hundreds of clients in a wide variety of industries, including digital marketing, coaching and consulting, software as a service, so SaaS-based companies, He's been in the mortgage business, the real estate space, and insurance, just to name a few. So he's passionate about solving complex problems associated with building and organizing businesses. God knows we all know we need help consistently with that. So after seeing the benefits in his own company, which I like, he's a practitioner, he's excited to bring his diverse set of expertise to his clients. So without further ado, I wanna introduce my man, Chris Weiss, to the show. What's going on, Chris? Hey, Henry, great to be here. Likewise, man, listen. So give the folks a, a, a three or four minute deep dive into who you are, what you do, and why you do it. I just wanna get some context yeah. around you. Yeah, so yeah, like you mentioned, entrepreneur my whole life, sold two of my own companies. Uh, and it, it, one of the, I guess, the unique things that I love to do is do it virtually. Um, I have always thought, how can I generate leads online? How can I grow businesses online? So the majority of my companies uh, have been virtual, and then the majority of my clients I work with are actually virtual as well. I just love the freedom. Like, I love the idea. I just think it's fascinating how you can grow hundred million dollars, you know, just multiple million dollar businesses from wherever you are, where you have an internet connection. So I just love that. But, but to do that, and, and this will tie into our, 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 our conversation today, it's like you're creating a world in your head and then it plays out. It's very different physical businesses. This is, that's, I guess, another whole conversation, but just something unique about me. I love the whole virtual building companies, you know, a whole business right behind your computer screen. Yeah. Um, and so through all the experience that I had in the selling of my own companies, um, I, what I love to do, I love organization. And from one perspective, I feel like that's what I get to do. I get to organize businesses. And there's a lot of different cool frameworks that I use to organize businesses. And a, what, you, know, you organize businesses to scale. And so there's, there's definitely differences that we'll get into today between growing and scaling. But uh, co the core of me is I love to organize. I love it. I, and we need, we need more organized people in our lives, <laughs> to say the least. So let's get into it. Uh, let's break it down like this. I like to simplify things. I like to break things down into very um, systematic ways. You know, I run yeah. my business on a very systematic approach and, and my clients love it because they, they feel like they're hopping on a, on a ride and they're, they're getting a tour, right? Cool. It's like going to the Bronx Zoo, jumping on the trolley and just going, right? So that was, pretty, that was a pretty bad example, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll just keep it moving. So <laughs> let's get the, let's get the uh, definition. How do you, in your, in your eyes, define business growth? And then I'm going to ask you the same question yeah. when it comes to scaling. Yeah. So I would say with business growth, there's a specific focus just on driving revenue, right? And, and, and in some cases, you could also say profitability. But I would say for the most part, most business owners that are only, they're only focused on growth and actually many times don't, aren't even necessarily focused on profitability. So um, that's actually just in and of itself. Uh, a limitation for people who are solely focused on growth. They think, oh, I just need to keep making as much in sales, as much revenue, as much revenue as possible. When in fact, what really matters is how much you're keeping, how much profit you actually have at the end of the day. So just in general, even before we get into scaling, just having that thought process alone is so important. Oh, thank God you mentioned that. I struggled with that for years. A lot of, a lot of my following knows 
you know, the first five years of my career as a graphic designer, I was a churn and burn designer. I just pumped out great work and I got it done fast and people loved me for it. And I spent every nickel I made, man. And that was a huge problem. You know, once you get older, you start to build a family and you start to get married, you know, that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> and you start yeah. to get into some big problems, which I have. And, you know, I, listen, that's a story for another day. Thank God I am blessed with the, the great coaches and mentors I have in my life now that have really helped me turn, turn my whole business around. And I can tell you over the past 18 months, it's been, it's been a phenomenal um, uh, success. I mean, hitting the two comma club and, and at click funnels and, you know, it, it's just been a, it, it's been a dream, you know, and, it, and it's like, finally, 38 years of my life, I finally mastered money. And I fought my, I shouldn't say I mastered money. I'm a hell of a lot better with my money now than I am uh, five years ago, six years ago. So I love that you mentioned it's all about how much you keep versus yes. how much you make. You know, anybody yep. can make a million dollars, but if you're, if you're spending a million to make it, what's the story here, right? Yep. So, so I'm glad that that's out of the way. Now, when it comes to scaling, what would, you, what would you be your definition of scaling your business? Yeah, and before we go there, just two resources that can help better understand profit and just that whole conversation. And, and what's interesting about all of this, it's these, it's, it's your mental constructs. It's your, the way that you understand certain paradigms that have so much of a great impact in terms of the results that you get into business. And, and, and just to give you some resources on this profit thing, um, Found Money by Steve Wilkinghoff is a great book for getting your mind wrapped around this. And then Profit First, uh, a book by Mike Michalowicz is another great book. So two resources for you there. Uh, on the scaling side, so the way I view scaling is um, a systematic approach to growth. And uh, there's this quote I love, it's in the sixth discipline, uh, this book. And it says that every organism and organization has an optimal rate of growth. And that rate of growth is typically far less than the um, uh, fastest rate of growth. And so to me, what that means is, or to kind of put that in another way, is that uh, when I'm working with companies, uh, a lot of times I see companies that are, that, and I've seen, heard stories and seen examples where companies grow so fast, they actually grow out of business because they're not putting in the infrastructure to support a sustainable growth, and then they collapse. Another example, or it, it, so the, the other side of this, the optimal, and then of course there's companies that are just growing so slow that are just, you know, you drive yourself crazy because you're just like, I feel like I have all the right ingredients for success. Like, why am I not growing fast enough? I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm trying all these different things, right? So that's, I guess those could be the two extremes uh, when we're looking at growth. And so scaling is, it's finding, it's knowing actually how to drive growth and drive revenue, and at the same time, put in the building blocks of scaling. There's nine building blocks of scaling uh, that I look at uh, to make sure that as you're growing, you're building a foundation, you're putting up, as your, as your revenue is skyrocketing, you're putting all these blocks underneath it to continue to support it so that you don't hit a place so you're, that your revenue is continually supported by uh, the infrastructure that you have invested inside of your organization so you can keep on that upward trajectory. Oh man, dude, I love that. You know, for those folks that are listening to this on the podcast, he's made a, he, uh, hopefully you, you catch this on, on YouTube as well. You know, the way he, the way you just made that look, you know, that, it, that was so, cause I'm a visual learner too. You yeah. Know, like that was so helpful to understand because if you're not constantly building upon that foundation, you're going to crumble. And it's funny, you, you hit it dead on the head because that's what happened to me. I was a one man band for five, six years. And then what happened was one, I got burnt out. Two, I started resenting my clients because I was just working around the clock and it just wasn't fun anymore. Right. And 
it just, it, it wasn't their fault. It was mine because I wasn't taking the necessary steps to grow yeah. and build. And it was funny. It wasn't until me and Russell Brunson sat down when I got into, when I first got into his inner circle and we sat down together and I told him where my pains were. And he said, Henry, you're not, you, it's, it's time to replace yourself. It's time to step away and become the CEO now. And I was like, that sounds a little scary, Russell. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, <laughs> I don't know necessarily what I'm doing when it comes to becoming a CEO. Um, but I'm going to give it a shot because I know if I want to do, you know, 80,000, 90,000, hundred thousand dollar months, that it's going to have to happen. Otherwise, this is what my life will be for the rest of my, my entrepreneurial career. So I dove heavily into systems, processes, uh, infrastructure as far as people go. And now we run a tight little ship. It's all virtual, which I, li I like what you mentioned before. Um, it's all virtual and we've got a 12 man team and we're just rocking and rolling. Now it's like, how do we refine this? How do we, how do we create those resources that help us manage and sustain that scale? Right? Yes. So I love that you mentioned this. This is great stuff. So <clears throat> I guess it comes down to the business owner on prioritizing what they want growth or scalability. Yes or no? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a balance of both. And what I would say is always, this is, this is, this is nuanced in saying this, generally, generally until you hit about 10 million in revenue, because you could break, there, there's a business down into four stages. So there's like zero to a million, stage one, one to 10 million, stage two, 10 to 50, stage three, 50 to 100, stage four. And there's different nuances and challenges and opportunities that can occur on average in general of a business at each of these different stages. And really until you hit about 10 million in revenue, you do need to be like your majority focused on driving revenue. And at the same time, there needs to be an awareness of the infrastructure and the systems that need to be put in place along the way so that when you actually do, because a very common problem in companies that are in that 10 to $50 million revenue range is that their systems are breaking and their customers notice it. Mm. And so, but you can avoid this. Here's the, here's the amazing thing. And then that one of the things we bring to all of our clients is that the common problems that companies have in that 10 to $50 million revenue range and the 50 to a hundred million dollar revenue range and even the one to 10, like if you're still trying to get to a million, those can be avoided, generally speaking, by having the forethought and understanding this very conversation so that you can begin to put the initial building blocks into place as you're moving from zero to a million, right? Then you got some initial infrastructure and then you expand upon that in one to 10 so that by the time you hit 10, you're really able to accelerate but going back to your original point, it's you still are focused. Like even I tell my client, when I'm working with my clients, I'm like, you need to prioritize the work that we're doing above all else. And that all, but that also means that revenue still needs to be number one. Yeah. So it, it, it's having that balanced approach so that all can be accomplished. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I, what are some of the those initial steps that we should be paying attention to if we are trying to achieve that million dollar mark? Because I know, you know, I have to tell you, I was, uh, it took me a bit to get my first million and then I got my second one. And then, you know, the last time I hit a million, it was the fastest I ever hit a million. And that's how yeah. I got the two comma club award. It's, it happens fast. It, it happens. It gets easier, but I think a lot of people get jammed up in the beginning. So let's yep. talk about some of those initial things that, that, that these folks could be paying attention to yes. and, and building upon to get them to the first million. And then we'll talk about, let's say a million to 5 million. Cool. What do, need to do there. And actually here's what I would say is even more important than all of that. 
and this is the place that I have that I just recommend starting from. And it's starting from a place of self-care. Starting from a place of self-love. Because when you prioritize taking care of you, and I'm talking about uh, mental, physical, emotional well-being, you can, like the big, one of the big, like as the founder, as the owner, the business is, you're generating the business. Until you get to a place where the business can run without you, you're generating the business with your energy and with all that you're doing. And so you're like the engine, you're, you're even more important in that regards to cash flow, right? You always say cash is king because you're the originator of that cash flow and that cash coming into your business. And if you, and like burnout is definitely a, a huge thing when you're just driving and driving and driving, that can only last for so long and then you collapse and then, right? So even as yourself, um, really learning and, and really listening to your body and listening to your heart and your mind and like, what do you need to create the optimal rate of growth? Because just like it, it just like it applies to organizations, it also applies to organisms in us as the human organism. We also have an optimal rate of growth and that's typically far less than the fastest rate of growth when we're trying to drive. And so I would say if there's any, like the most important thing out of everything I'm saying today, it's this, take care of you first. And when you do, everything else will unfold from there. Oh, dude, I'm so happy you brought that up. Dude, I think you and I are cut from the same cloth. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I just had this conversation. So every Friday, every Friday, I allow my team to book out 30 minutes of time with me one-on-one. -on -one. It's like a little mentorship time together, right? And they can ask me anything that they want, right? And I have one designer, I love her to death. She's so, she's been such an awesome part of my business. She's, she's the lead designer. So she'll start the initial uh, brand development identity concepts um, and, and, and put all of that together. And, and then she'll do a lot of the click funnels design work and, and, and website design work. And then my, my other set of designers will, will kind of carry all of that out. And she had her 30 minutes with me last Friday and she just felt like she was stuck. Like she wants to move out of her country because it's getting a little bit too dangerous and she wants to get to Norway because Norway, she just loves the people and the, and the culture and everything. Right. And she just, she's just on this hamster wheel. Right. And I asked, and she goes, you know, I'm constantly working on my craft. I said, I know it shows in your work. I said, let me ask you a question. How much time do you put into personal development? And she said, none. And I go, there's where we need to work. I go, do not feel guilty that you are being taken away from your craft to spend time on self-care and personal development. And you could see the white in her eyes after I said that to her because she goes, I am, you are so right. It all starts there. I had another, uh, one of my buddies, Joshua Gibbons. He's actually the guy who asked today's question from the community. He's 17 years old, killer designer. I forget what countries he's from. I think he's, he's got a UK accent, so he might be out from over there. Same thing. I want to grow my business. I want to build my business. I want more clients. I go, Josh, how long have you spent working on yourself? Like, give me a time frame per, per week, right? And he like couldn't even count on one finger how many yeah. hours he puts into himself. And so I want to just, I want to take a couple of minutes here and talk about that because I think yeah. it's so important as a CEO, you know, I'm a huge fan of billions that show billions on Showtime. I love it. The season finale last, oh, oh my God. Oh, like that, that was last shit. night. It was insane. Yeah. yeah. I may yeah. do a YouTube video. I may do a video just on the billions breakdown season finale of the season finale. I mean, it was, so dude, it was, it was so, so good. good. So, so yeah. 
Everybody, I recommend, if you're a fan of the show, I recommend everybody gets a Wendy for their business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, um, and no, if, if people don't know who Wendy is, Wendy is the mindset coach that the, the lead character or the main character has in his hedge fund company to make sure that he has his head on straight and that all of his employees have their head on straight to help him make the billions that he makes. So I, I have been blessed with, with a great mindset coach. I met her actually, she was Russell Brunson's mindset coach. And uh, who's she, your mindset coach? Mandy Keen. I okay. don't know if you ever heard of Mandy Keen uh, before. Yeah, she's actually building out a new brand. We're, we're helping her uh, build out a new brand called True Voice with her and her partner. And um, I've been working with Mandy now for like two, three years. Uh, ever, and, and she's just a blessing. She's my Wendy. You know, and, yeah, and she yeah. knows me better than a lot of people, you know, and uh, she helps me just get out of those funks and she helps me stay, stay straight and focused. And so anyway, just, yeah. I just have to, I don't want to go too far off this because we could talk about a, this in a completely different show, but yeah. having that self care and really investing in you is very, very important if you want to grow and scale. Now, the next step, right? You talked about organization and I, I, yep. I couldn't let you go today without getting involved, yep. getting, just yep. getting into this conversation a little bit. You know, we can't go yep. super deep, but let's give them as much as we can in the next seven or eight minutes. Yep. What do they need to be organized with in order to help uh, their scalability? I would say there's the three most important things in, I would even say up, I mean, these always continue to be important, but even more so in the zero to one million, um, and then of course one to ten. Uh, it's it's a it's managing your money and managing your cash flow. So I would say first you got to have cash flow, right? So um, or how are you tracking your leads? Are they coming in? How are you tracking your conversions and your sales? Are you using like even if it's just a Google sheet to track the leads you have and where they're at in the sales conversion process, you know, uh, you know, converting them to an actual sale. So being on top of that, uh, cause that's your money, right? So first it's, and also here, here's, I'm going to give you guys the tell you that will tell you the thing, uh, that enabled me to like last year, the majority of my clients doubled their revenue and here's how we did it. Um, and it's so, what, what's so, it's usually the, it's the simplest things that you might think, oh, that isn't it. Like, that's where the wisdom is. The wisdom is in the simplicity, okay? So uh, we just took a frame, and right, so first off, we had our, our P&L. By the way, you got to have, you got to be putting your numbers into some sort of tracking system, like your QuickBooks Online or Zero or something, and you need to be looking at your P&Ls every month. Like, that's just basic business stuff. If you don't have that, like, get on top of that. Um, and so we knew what our income and expenses were. So then I created this mini frame. We were, looking at, we were just looking at our income and expenses, but we also had, and this is what our, what our goal revenue was for the year, and then we broke that down over the month. So every time we met, we could see how we were trending towards our goal for the year. And we could see whether we were ahead or behind the curve, and it's that so there's several, let me just break this. So conceptually, I'm sure you get that, but let me break down the different components so all of you can apply this, right? So the first thing is knowing what your numbers are, knowing what happened. The second thing is knowing where you're headed, where you wanna go. The third piece is, is having a frame to look at that, what happened with where you're headed and how you're trending towards that. The fourth, component of this is having somebody you can talk about it with, right? So, because you got to get it out of yourself. So even if it's a business partner or even if it's a friend um, and you both hold each other accountable, right? So there's even, I'll even break that into two different pieces. So there's having somebody that you can just have conversations with it about, but that, that helps create new neural pathways in your brain. But then there's also, if you can have somebody that holds you accountable, and so those are, I don't know, five or six pieces of this one concept that doubled my client's revenue. And if you guys put this into place, I know that you'll see massive results from it. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. I mean, th- this is this is the tactical stuff that 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 we need. Oh, I should say the strategic stuff. I'm going to give you some tactical stuff right now. You mentioned some money management stuff, right? So, actually, let's dive into the the doc's prescription. All right, this is a perfect segue. Okay. okay first and foremost, I'm not going to be the dead horse, but you need to be taking care of yourself. That mindset of yours is going to drive this business, and if that mindset isn't strong and isn't built like a like a like a like a twenty inch python like the old whole Kogan days, right? Like it's gonna fail. So that mindset needs to be strong in order to grow the business. Okay, so get get into personal development and self care. You know, uh, I'll give you some examples. Uh, let me think of a oh, Jim Rohn. Anything Jim Rohn is is gold. Like I I'm a firm believer that if you download Jim Books, the best of Audible series, it's 40 bucks. I'm telling you right now, you do not need to listen to any other, anyone, anyone. Because all that shit that you're hearing right now all comes from the godfather of personal development himself. Take, download that Audible, spend the 40 bucks, I'm telling you right now, it's all you need, right? Second thing, right? Managing your money, okay? So let me give you some things that you could do that with. So we use QuickBooks Online. I've used FreshBooks years ago. They've really upped their game. They're they're really in, they're they're competing nicely with QuickBooks right now. So FreshBooks is another great resource. I know a lot of people that use them and they're happy. Um, But you have to measure what it is that you are trying to achieve from a revenue standpoint. Now, I'm gonna take what Chris said a little bit of a step further. Uh, It's good to know your numbers for the year. Um, But however, what I realized was you can't just take that number and divide it by 12 because the revenue isn't going to come in that, that, that nicely, if you will. Right? So what I was told by a mentor was take the last five years of your business. Now, some of you may not even be in business for five years. So then you'll have to just go with this year and this, this will be the base, the baseline, right? But look at your monthly revenues over the past five years and then divide, find the average monthly, okay, revenue. And that's going to help you sort of balance out that that goal that you want to hit every month. So that was something that I just learned. And it, I realized because he was like, you can't just chop it up evenly because then you're going to be, you're going to be, you're, you're going to be very disappointed when you don't hit that massive number that month, right? So we have, for Unique Designs, it's it's typically slow first quarter, first quarter very slow, okay? But we have enough cash flow to run our business like six months right? Or sometimes even a year. Like I made so much revenue third quarter last year that I didn't have to work for two years. That's crazy. That's crazy. So instead of running out and buying watches and buying cars and buying all this nonsense, maybe I bought a watch. I'm not going to lie. When I hit the two comic club award, I, I bought a watch. But other than that, I put all that money away. And that was the key to helping me float through those through that season of 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 quietness so you definitely got to track your numbers your cash flow and 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 have that goal in mind how many of you be honest with me now how many of you every beginning of the month sit down for an hour and map out what you want that monthly revenue goal to be how many specific products you need to sell and how you're going to go about selling them. Tell me, I can promise you I can count maybe on two hands at the most, how many people do that consistently, right? So if you're not hitting the goals, you show me your goals for the month and I can, I can get within five or $10,000 of what you're going to make that month in revenue. Now, if you come with me with nothing, you get what I'm saying. 
So those are the two, those are the couple things that I want you guys to do based on this episode, based on this conversation. Now, let's get into the question from the community. Now, the, the question comes from Joshua. Well, Gibbs. Oh, oh, quick, Henry, can I, I yeah, want to make a distinction in what you just shared. Uh, I want to make a distinction. There's how you break apart your goal over the year, okay. and whether you break it apart evenly or whether you have different things based on the seasonality or whether you're ramping up and driving revenue versus the distinction of how you actually go about setting your goal. Okay. And I feel like the information that you gather from doing the analysis, whether it's three years or five years, is useful information to look at to help guide on how you set your goal. But I would say those are two different distinctions in the goal setting process. Okay, fair enough. I just want to make sure that people get that understanding because a lot of times they'll just split it, they'll split it by 12 and, and then, you know, it'll be 50,000 a month, right? And then, you know, in May they, they hit 13,000 or they hit 8,000 and they're like, oh man, I'm never going to, this isn't going to work. And then they start to get, you know, imposter syndrome and they start to lose that momentum. And yep. next thing you know, they, they throw in the towel, right? I'm, I'm, I'm talking outrageous here, but I've seen it happen too. Just people yes. just, they just, they just give up because yep. they, because of unreasonable goals, unreasonable goals. Yes. So yep. just making sure that we're aware of that. So yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up now. Question from the community, Joshua Gibbons. This one goes out to you, my friend. The question he asked was, how do you build momentum from current clients and solve bigger problems? So there's kind of two questions there. So let me, let me try to break this down with the first part. How do you gain momentum from current clients? Well, I would strongly recommend you do you have some sort of exit strategy in place when you're about to close a project out with a client. Okay. So I'll, I'll just be straight up with you. Here's how I do it. And it works awesomely. <laughs> if that's even a word. <laughs> so here's what I do now that I built their brand and I want them to, graduate from the brand accelerator program and get out there and start earning before they do that i tell them this well now that you've come through this program i want to help you get some more exposure so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put I'm, i want you on my podcast so let's get you out there we got forty thousand downloads a month now on average so you're going to get some great exposure there and so we'll do that for 30 minutes and then the next 30 minutes i would like to just sit down with you and just go over a series of questions to help me get a better understanding of the experience you had going through the brand accelerator program. And we're going to record that if you don't mind. And they're always open for that because I've spent a lot of time with these folks now and they, 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 they know me, I know them and we have a very strong relationship at that point. So they'll tell me what they loved, what they hated, They'll tell me where they were before and now what they, the clarity that they gotten after. Um, they'll tell me their buying decisions, why they chose to spend on average $50,000 with me. And, and this is all great information, not only for me, but for them, because they can reflect now and ask themselves, wow, I really, that, that is why I made these, this big investment. So, so then we do that. And then what I do is I take that video. I take that video and I chop it up. I have my video editor chop it up. And those all become little mini testimonials for me. So I'll spread those out all over social media. But I actually have my team design me a landing page specifically on my website for this client. And this client, and this, it is basically a, here's, what, here's their pain point. Here's the strategy that we created. Here's how we expedited. And here's the end result. And that's how the landing page is broken down. And that's how I gain momentum with current clients to drive the business and get new business. Now, how do we solve bigger problems for clients? I got to tell you, it's, it's less exclamation points, more question marks. So we just enrolled a new brand accelerator client last week. They're in the beauty business. And it's an up and coming niche, lashes. So 
It is a, on average, a lash artist can make on the low end uh, 400 bucks a pop on one, on one set of eyelashes to five figures. In, in, in it, it, it's insane how lucrative this, this, this niche is. And so here's a woman who has flown to Kazakhstan, I, I think that's the, that's the country, to learn this technique, right? So these guys are in Kazakhstan, 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 my apologies. She flies to Kazakhstan to learn this technique. And I got to tell you, I saw her work. It's amazing. It's amazing. But had I not spent an hour and a half on the phone with them prior to bringing them on board, understanding what they were truly, truly hurting and, 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 and challenged with, I would not be able to solve those bigger problems for them. So you, for those folks that are starting out or a little bit more seasoned in, in entrepreneurship, you guys know the importance of questions. And if you're not asking the appropriate questions, then you're not going to get to the root of the issues that these people are facing. And then you won't be able to solve the bigger problems for them. Because in this case, they were ready to spend a few grand on SEO when they didn't have a process in place to actually execute, or I should say not execute. Well, yeah, execute and convert. So let's get to the root of the issues by asking the deeper questions like why. Somebody comes to you and asks you why they, you know, I want you to design a new logo for me. I want you to design a new funnel for me. I mean, why? Why do you think you need a new logo? Why do you need a new sales fund? And let that conversation take it where it needs to be. And maybe you have to ask why a few times to get down to that core. And then you'll have the info you need to solve bigger problems. So I could talk about this for days. But Chris, how would you tackle that question? Uh, yeah, I like that you broke it into two different uh, pieces. And I would say the first part, uh, how to gain momentum with existing clients. And I would say it's to have profit. Uh, make sure that you're structuring your, the, the value that you're creating for existing clients and, and the, the, the revenue that you're making so that you have profit left over so that you can invest back into your business to continue to gain momentum. The second piece, how to solve bigger problems. I'm going to assume that you're looking to tackle uh, bigger things that you're currently not solving. And perhaps you're having trouble finding clients that will let you tackle bigger problems when you may not have the experience. I'm going to make that assumption in my answer. Uh, and, and so if that's that, with that assumption, I would say find people that you can just solve those problems for, maybe not even without charging. Just be like, let me help you with that apply your experience, get the testimonial, boom, now you got two things. You got social proof, you got the testimonial, and then two, now you got the confidence that you can actually do it so that the next time, and, and you'll kind of learn more about the, the specific needs and how to market for it and how to sell it, right? And then you just keep, if you, you know, I, I would say pursue, pursue solving problems that you truly love solving because then you're not gonna mind putting in the time for free or putting in solving problems where you may not be getting paid for the value that you're necessarily creating while you're still gaining the understanding of how to sell it, uh, market it, uh, solve it, and, um, and, and to really you know, build the social proof, internal confidence. Once you got that, then you're in the next level of, of problem solving. I love it. I love it. This is great stuff, man. This is awesome. What a great conversation today. You know, this is, this is what I'm talking about. When you get people around you that know what they're talking about, know what they're doing, entrepreneurship gets easier. I got to tell you, it gets tremendously easier. You know, I went years thinking that I knew everything. You can't tell me what to do. And it has gotten me nowhere. <laughs> and, it's just, it's, it's, it, and we've all been there. We get a little bit of success under our belt and we think we are the shit. <laughs> and, 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 and we're not. We're not. We're never going to know it all. And there's always going to be somebody a few chapters ahead of us that we could be learning from. And, you know, my biggest take, you know, one of the biggest things I want to tell you guys today is get around people that know more than you 
and ask them questions. You know, if you're broke and, and you got a, a buddy who's crushing it, I'll tell you right now, the best 80 bucks you can spend or 100 bucks you can spend is taking that guy out or gal out to dinner and just asking them tons of questions. They're going to unload on you some real key insights, which it's your responsibility to act on those insights. Okay. It's, it's, it's not theirs. So put in the legwork, put in the time, ask those questions and you will win. I'm telling you, you will win. So Chris, as we wrap up, where can people learn more about you and, 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 and begin to consume some of, some of what you're putting out? The first place is my website, wiseprofits.net. Um, and if you know, I offer a complimentary you know conversation to talk and get to know each other. So that's right on the website. If you're interested, it also goes over all the stuff that we do for scaling. Um, the other resource I want to give you is the greatest. Like, so I've got a ton of personal development, a uh, ton of spiritual stuff, and um, I the, the the greatest practice I ever learned. I created an eight minute video around because when I learned this, I was just like, man, all that other stuff was great. But like this really learning how to deeply love myself. Um, and it's just, I love you practice, uh, that I learned is just, just so profound and it's, but it's so simple. Um, and so if someone's interested in, in learning what I have found for me to be the most powerful practice out of the hundreds of thousands of dollars I spent on personal development and, the I don't know, the over the 10,000 hours, you know, mark for there. Um, I'm going to give the, the video. You can just go to chriswise.com forward slash love. And uh, you can put in your name and email and then you'll get this video. It's a, you'll get an email link to this eight minute video that teaches you this, this practice that I do every day. It's something that I incorporate into when I'm helping companies scale, um, you know, how to start from a place of self-care and self-love. I talk about it from stage. There's a book. Uh, coming out on on LQ and your love quotient that ties into this. So um, I love growing companies and I love profit and I love success. But what I love even more is doing it from a place uh, that feels good and doing it from a place where I take care of me first. Oh, I love it, dude. I think I got to have you back on the YouTube channel and we'll talk about LQ. Oh, Let's do it. That would be good. awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. Well, Chris, man, I appreciate you spending the time with us today and, and, and dropping the bombs that you've dropped and that you've dropped for us. I think a lot of people are going to walk away with tons of value with this episode. I mean, we didn't, we, we left some rocks a little unturned, but man, we gave them a lot. So I appreciate you, 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 you stepping up and, 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 and helping my audience, honestly. So yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Happy to. So there you have it, guys. Another, another episode in the books, man. I, I got to tell you, this was probably one of my one of my one of my favorite ones uh, over the past few months. Just a lot of great, great conversation, and these insights are so valuable. Like you couldn't see me in the background when Chris was talking, but he was talking about self care. He was talking about how much money you keep, and I was like, yes, yes. I was like <laughs> jumping up and down. I was like. This guy gets it. <laughs> I'm so happy he's talking about this. So uh, listen to the doc's prescription. Get out there and make it happen. Uh, real quick, a couple things. One is, if you haven't subscribed, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button right now. Drop some comments. Leave me some insight. You got extra questions. Drop them in the comments below. I'm here. I want to help you. I want to learn from you as well. And, and continue this conversation. If you're listening to this on iTunes, hit subscribe, drop a quick little written review if you can, that would be awesome, thank you so much. And last but not least, the new Brand Yourself course is out. I spent months creating this content for you. And it is basically taking 13 years of experience in branding, design, mindset, marketing, digital marketing, and putting together the blueprint for you. If you're a coach, consultant, solopreneur, entrepreneur that wants to brand themselves online and really grow a profitable and reputable business, this is the course for you. I've learned from the greats. They're all, all of that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is in this course. And it is 
it is a complete course. It's not something that's going to leave you high and dry at the end. And that's, I'm a firm believer of that because of the results that I'm seeing my clients get from going through the course. So check that out. The link is in the description. It's also in the show notes. Have an amazing day, guys, and I will catch you on the next one. Take care.